No matter what's happening in your life, no matter what you've done, no matter the good, the bad, the ugly, there's always light at the end of the tunnel. And you can always bounce back from any situation. My name's Jordan Thompson, six foot seven cruiserweight, born in Manchester, 10 and 0, eight knockouts. Stay locked in, more knockouts to come. For me to have my matchroom debut on this is just surreal. I've never boxed at the O2, so that's an amazing one. Can tick that off the list on a massive undercard like this as well. I'm really looking forward to it and I'm, I'm definitely going to put on a show. When I get in the ring, I don't, I don't go in the ring thinking, oh, let me just get the points, let me just get the win. And I want to look good, I want to do it in style, so I will be going for the knockout and it will come. I'm ready to steal the show and I'm ready to, ready to make my mark on the scene and on the cruiserweight division. And I think a lot of people have probably counted me out, but those who have stuck by me and those who have continued to support me and those who have invested the time, effort, blood, sweat, tears, this one's for you. One thing that has been instilled in me is, is a hard work ethic and everyone in my family is competitive. Like you see us at Christmas, family gatherings, any family games, like we're all winners. That's, that's what we do. Um, we don't like to lose, that's, that's not in our DNA. So tennis was the dream, that was, that was the sport I was in love with. Obviously I played a little bit of football, but tennis was my, was my first love. And that again, that was a, just an organic thing. I was literally, I was messing around playing tennis in a family friend's back garden. Found out I was, I was okay, loved it, enjoyed it, and then just started playing ever since. That was a tough one though, like I said, there's not a lot of, um, not a lot of sponsorship available for tennis. It's, as I say, it's an upper class sport, and it's a tough one to try and break through in. So it's tough, it, it was a lot of obstacles, a lot of hurdles, but Listen, we did the best we could. Mum and Dad did everything they could to, to um, support me. And if I'm quite frank, I was heartbroken. It was something that I wanted to do, but I could no longer do. I was a little bit lost. I had a lot of time on my hands. I wasn't working, so I needed to make money. And I remember there was a, a guy I know, a local friend of mine. He used to take people on white collar events, unlicensed boxing, and um, he used to just get people fights on the weekend, he'd get you 100 quid, 200 quid, 500 quid for the bigger fights. And I was doing all sorts, it wasn't even just boxing, it was MMA, which I wasn't very good at at all. I used to get thrown around the cage, but um, I got paid for it though, so I wasn't that bothered. It was something I enjoyed doing as well, like I didn't mind having a fight, that was nothing I was, nothing I was a stranger to, so um, it was good fun. and. The more and more I did it, the more and more people I started seeing around the circuit and they said, listen, you can do something with this. Stuck in the gym and then I met Haroon Headley, good, good, good friend of mine, um, considering his family. He took me to a gym with Lee Baird and then things just rolled on from there. Just kept my head down and here we are, five or six years later. I'll always remember one spar I had when I was an absolute novice and this was against Martin Bacoli. I didn't know my left from right, I didn't know no defence. I was just in there, just doing my thing. And that was one of those spars where it's like, you're either going to go home and never come back to the boxing gym, or you're going to come back the next day and you're going to stick at it. And I sparred him on a Tuesday. It was, <laughs> it was, it was interesting. And then the Thursday, I was back sparring him again. And, and that for me, let me know like, yeah, I want this. Like, I'm not, gonna, I'm not here to shy away from anything. My, my mum and dad never, never raised no quitter, so I think that, that for me was the spy that stood out. But in terms of an experiences, you've got your Tyson Fury, unbelievable, unbelievable experience. Um, the knowledge which I've taken from those spars and the, and the confidence which I've taken from those spars, second to none. Marius Bredis, again, Marius Bredis, he, he's in my weight division and he's, he's at the top of my weight division, so to spar him and, and do what I did and, and, and hold more than hold my own, that was, that was a, a real good achievement of my own, and um, USIP, which again was an amazing experience. Different out in, out in the Ukraine, that was um, a different experience, definitely, but again, a good one, and one that I'll, I'll take with me to, throughout my career. Through lockdown, it was, it was tough. It was tough. There wasn't really any light at the end of the tunnel. It was, I was training non-stop, like I said, I, like, I'm always in the gym, I'm working hard. When you're putting in all that work and there's no light at the end of the tunnel, it, it's tough. There was a lot of ups and downs, there was, there was um, a lot of conversations that I had with myself. And, and then I did, I made that connection with, with Brian Peters, who literally just gave me, gave me life in the spot and showed me the light at the end of the tunnel. And ever since that, that introduction, it's just been a snowball effect. 
and the good news kept coming, the good news kept coming and here we are now fighting on match matchroom debut on a massive bill, O2 Arena, like that's 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 what dreams are made of, literally. And I'm lucky, very, very lucky to have a massive loving family and friends and they've they've really supported me through the hard times as well, because times were tough, real tough. Really keen to, to, to get going and, and just make everyone proud, including myself. Like I feel like the, the person I want to prove the point to more than anyone is myself. Because like I say, I'm the one who's had those conversations with myself. I'm the one who's felt the lowest of low. And, and yeah, so I'm just trying to make myself proud, my family proud, and I'm a happy man.